assume that at the lowest level or the base, the first level, you can you can take the formula, sub the numbers in, and find the volume, right? Or the surface area for a sphere. You're only subbing in one number here. But the other ones where it's slightly more difficult because you have to work backwards, right? Given the volume and work backwards and find this, you got to write an equation and solve it. There's a few questions that you've had that you um, people have been asking about. One of the examples that Again, I'm hoping you have done so far under the volume section here. This one, okay, this third this third example in that section, 2.3, that example. This one is you're given the volume, right? Given the volume, find an unknown dimension. If this happens to be uh, a sphere, right? So use the formula for a sphere, but this would work working backwards for any of the any of the things. You know, you're given the volume and and you want to know the diameter. You look for a formula that has those in it. Or if you're looking for the diameter, you could find the radius, right? And then of course just double it. There is a formula with volume with volume and diameter in it for a sphere. And it's the one we just used, right? Four thirds pi r cubed. If you know the volume, sub that in. Sub that in for this. So if you put in there 4188.8 and you say that's equal to four thirds pi r cubed. Working, this is one of these ones I would call a working backwards one. Work backwards to solve the equation. You're working backwards because you're given the what my grade eights would call the answer, and you're looking for the radius, right? They call this the answer because it's a number on its by itself on this side. Not the answer, but it's that side of the thing. What you want to do is isolate this now. You want to isolate that. This is an equation you can solve. It says something to the third power times some stuff here equals this number, right? All it is is something times another thing equals this. How can you isolate this one? How can you isolate that? What if it just said A equals B times C? How could you isolate the, how could you isolate the C here? Yeah, you could you can change this to a divided by b, right? You can make this a divided by b. You can do the same thing here. You can divide both sides by four thirds pi, or in other words, you can put that on the on the bottom over here. Some of you think of it as moving from side to side, multiplying on one side is like dividing on the other side. You want to see that again? Instant replay of that. Okay, it's not slow motion; it's instant. Instant replay, there it is. You can divide on one side. Now, I'm not going to do that because then you can't see what we did. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to say that r cubed is this number divided by 4 thirds pi. So on your calculator, you can get what r cubed is, right? Now, something that you haven't learned, a, a function that you haven't learned is the opposite of cubing something. You know how you learn when squaring something in grade 8? And then you learn the opposite of squaring something. What's the opposite of squaring something? Square rooting something, right? These two buttons, square and square root, sometimes it's written with an X. It says X squared or square root. Those are together usually on a calculator, either the same button. Okay, those two things are the same thing. There's something that's the equivalent of, you don't have an X cubed button. You might. This has an X cubed button, but it's buried in one of the menus under this math menu. First, you have to turn it on. Um, this math menu, if you look down the first thing there that says math, there's a cubed button. There's also something that says a little three beside a square root. That's called the cube root. The way you write it is you write cube root like that. You look, you write a square root sign, but you put a three here. Do you want to see me write the three again so that you don't forget? How about one more time? You could actually put a two here for this square root, but you don't usually put a two. Just like when you're raising something to the first power, nobody says x to the 1. You just assume it's to the power 1 and you don't write it out. Or if somebody says 
negative 3 or positive 3, a lot of times you don't write the positive sign because you assume. If you don't write a number there, you assume it's the square root. This is how you find this. This is how you're going to solve this equation. If it says r cubed is, let's write a, a let's figure out what that number is. Um, so you got 4188.8 divided by, if I'm dividing by this, I got to write 4 divided by 3 times pi, all in brackets, because I want it to work all of that stuff out and then do the division, right? So you either have to work it out first or just put it in brackets. It's good to learn to use the brackets on the calculator. Save yourself some time. It's basically almost exactly a thousand. So more or less, I'm going to write down here. I'm going to write down here that uh, r cubed is roughly a thousand. I'm going to put point zero zero because the next two were actually zeros. If r cubed is a thousand, how do I find what r is? Not divide by three. I got to find again what's called the cube root, right? If r cubed is a thousand, r is the cube root of a thousand, or in, a, in other words, what number times it times it by itself three times to give you a thousand? It's ten. Okay. Connect it with what you know about square roots. The square root of twenty-five is what number? Five. Because 5 times 5 gives you 25. The cube root of a number like 8 is 2. two because 2 times 2 times 2, 3 times, right? Multiplying by itself 3 times. There's 3 of them here that gives you 8. That's This one up here, there's 2 of them that give you 25. It's the square root. The cube root is something that when you multiply by itself 3 times, okay? So that's how you solve that kind of equation and work backwards. So that, uh, that that's a couple new things. There. The new thing, which is the cube root, to solve that equation, and isolating a variable in an equation there. If you have any one of those formulas, if you look at that formula sheet, okay, your data booklet, which wherever I put it here, where did I put my data booklet? It's lost in my virtual notebook here. My note, my virtual notebook's a virtual mess. Any of these formulas here, you can you can look at how many variables there are in it. Like if you have the area of a circle, if someone gives you the area, you can sub that in and solve for the radius. If somebody gives you the area of the side of a cylinder and the radius, you could solve for the height or vice versa. If someone gives you any one of these formulas, right, this, the volume of a sphere that we just did, you sub in the volume and then isolate, solve for the radius. Okay, any of these things here. Okay, that's a strategy that you should know. Even in this goofy one here, there's a question in one of the assignments where it says, they give you the surface area and they give you two of the dimensions of a prism. You can, you can find the third dimension by writing out an equation either with that or that, and then solving for the unknown. If the width is the thing that's unknown here, just fill in every other thing, okay, either in that formula or that formula, fill in the numbers and you'll have an equation that you can solve. Okay, So that's a good strategy to teach yourself if you haven't already done that. All right.